Mr Speaker, Australia's recovery depends heavily on the quality of our human capital, on our ability to educate our people and to innovate in business. In total, this budget invests $5.3 billion in tertiary education, research and innovation over six years. The government will commit $2.6 billion from the Education Investment Fund for priority infrastructure projects in Australia's tertiary institutions and research agencies. This includes $934 million for 11 teaching and learning projects, eight research-based projects and 12 vocational education and training projects around the nation. $901 million for 21 research projects in space, marine, climate and nuclear science and a further $750 million for future funding rounds from the Education Investment Fund. These investments build on our previously announced $14.7 billion modernisation of Australia's primary and secondary schools. Mr Speaker, the government is determined to give opportunities for talented Australians to participate in higher education, no matter what their background. Consistent with the recommendations of the Bradley Review into our higher education system. We will invest $491 million over four years to uncap the number of university places from 2012, starting with increased places from next year. This will allow an extra 50,000 students to commence university courses by 2013. We will commit $437 million over four years to give people from disadvantaged, disadvantaged backgrounds an opportunity for a university education. Yeah. And to help achieve the government's targets for Australia's innovation performance, this budget provides funding of $500 million to encourage additional research, development and commercialisation of ideas, on top of $512 million to help universities fund the indirect costs of research. From the 1st of July 2010, we will also replace the current research and development tax concessions with an expanded tax credit that rewards firms for research and development. Mr Speaker, Australians deserve a world-class hospital and healthcare system. The government has announced it will invest an additional $2.5 billion over five years to drive hospital and health workforce reform in cooperation with the states and territories. We will also draw $3.2 billion from the Health and Hospitals Fund to expand and modernise key public hospitals across Australia, improve cancer treatment facilities and to support cooperative research between clinical researchers and health professionals. And we will provide $121 million to relieve pressure on maternity services and $134 million in new rural health workforce strategies to attract medical practitioners to areas of need. Yeah, yeah. Mr Speaker, how parents are encouraged to balance their commitments to work and family and how we treat our pensioners and carers are very important benchmarks for the economy we seek to create as we go from recession to recovery and beyond. To ensure Australians can participate in work and participate in our recovery, we must ensure they can balance their family commitments. That's why the government is investing $731 million over five years to, de to deliver a paid parental leave scheme for the first time. Yeah. The paid parental leave scheme enables parents to maintain their links with their employer and to receive an income whilst nurturing their child. From the 1st of January 2011, eligible parents will receive taxable, taxable payments at the rate of the federal minimum wage for up to 18 weeks. This is an historic reform, Mr Speaker. It is long overdue and it will help us meet the participation challenge imposed on us by our ageing population. Order. Tonight, Mr Speaker, 
We are proud to deliver on the government's commitment to pensioners. Yeah. Our pension reforms are aimed at giving pensioners a fair go now when they need it most. Just as importantly, we will ensure the pension system is sustainable in the long term. From the 20th of September 2009, the government will provide single pensioners on the full rate with an additional $32.49 per week, yeah. bringing the value of their pension to a legislated benchmark of 27.7 per cent of male total average weekly earnings. Yeah. Couple pensioners will receive an extra $10.14 per week combined through a new fortnightly pension supplement. And because carers are among the unsung heroes of our community, and because of the financial difficulties they face, this budget introduces a $600 a year carer's supplement for all carer payment recipients on top of their pension increase. Yeah. Recipients of a carer allowance will also receive an additional $600 a year for each el eligible person in their care. Yeah. Mr Speaker, it's not been easy to find room in the budget for our commitments to pensioners and to meet our responsibilities as nation builders. Consider these facts. Since last year's budget, taxation receipts have been revised down by $210 billion over the Ford estimates. This represents around two-thirds of the write-down in our budget position. It's the biggest downward revision in our history, roughly equivalent to the entire Commonwealth spend on health and hospitals over the Ford estimates. Now, faced with that reality, there are two starkly different ways to go. You can balance the budget by dramatically pushing up taxes and slashing and burning vital services in key areas like health, which leads to a deeper and longer recession and higher unemployment. Or you can offset a temporary collapse in revenue with a program of responsible borrowing that also provides the stimulus the economy needs when private sector investment is in retreat. This is the course the government has adopted. It's the only responsible course. The government's balance sheet will continue to be among the strongest in the world. Net debt is forecast to peak at 13.8 per cent of GDP in 2013-14 before falling again, compared with net debt of 80 per cent of GDP for advanced economies in 2014. Mr Speaker, our fiscal strategy is two-pronged. First, to provide stimulus in the short term by allowing the budget to adjust automatically to the economy's movements and through further discretionary policy action. And second, to bring the budget back to surplus and pay down debt in the medium term.